Hey guys, welcome back. This video is going to be an introduction to queries. And I apologize ahead of time if my audio is not the best. I'm in the process of kind of setting up a studio, so I don't have all my equipment set up right now, and uh, this is the best I can do for now. So hopefully it's okay for you guys. I think we'll be able to get through it. So let's dive right in. I'm an Oracle SQL developer, which is the app we use to connect and communicate to our Oracle database. And I have my subscribe database open. Now, if your window layout looks any different than mine, you can always go up to here to window and then reset windows to factory settings. So what is a query exactly? Well, a query is how we get data from a database. And literally people can have an entire career just from writing queries. So this topic is stinking huge. <laughs> but we're gonna start with the very basics. In fact, we're not even going to get data from a table. We're just going to start with what's known as expressions. Expressions are these things that can be evaluated to something. So think back to like math class. You might have something like five plus five. Oh my goodness. Let's try this again. <laughs> so you might have something like five plus five and that can be evaluated to 10. So this right here, this is an example of an expression. But we can also have expressions with other things such as strings. So that is a string. In fact, we're going to put hello world. And essentially, we're going to try to create a hello world program, which is basically the first program you usually try to write when you start a programming language, just so you can get it set up, type something small, and get it running. So that's what we're going to do. It's going to be a little bit different than other programming languages because this is a database, but the end result is going to be pretty similar. So how do we go about telling the database that we want it to tell us hello world? Right now, we're telling it hello world, but we want it to respond. Well, the way we get data from a database is using what's known as the select keyword, and that's going to go at the beginning of your query. So now we're saying select this string, and it should give us the data back, but not quite. There's a little thing we have to do, and I'll explain that in a minute. But in most database management systems, this right here would work, but let's run it and see what happens. You can run it by pressing this button here or pressing F5. And you can see we get an error. And it's basically saying that it requires the from keyword. So where do we put the from keyword? It's actually right after the expression. So we put it right here. And what do we take this data from? Well, Oracle has this magical table. It's called dual. And this is going to allow us to basically do this, but in Oracle. <laughs> so when we do this, it's going to respond with hello world. So let's run it and see how it works. And you can see the output right here, hello world. So it works. You guys just created your first hello world application. It's very, very simple. Now I ain't trying to make Oracle sound much simpler than it is. Oracle is like a beast. It can do anything. In fact, it can even do addition. <laughs> so instead of putting a string here, we can pass in some addition. Let's run this. There we go, five plus five equals 10. You can also throw things in here known as functions. So a good one we can try is sys timestamp. Let's try that. And you can see it gives us the exact time of our machine. So that's pretty sweet. When you're working with select statements and tables, usually you're going to want to have multiple columns. So in this situation, all we're doing is selecting one thing, but I wanna select multiple things. So the way you do that is you just add a comma and then you say the next thing you want to grab. So we could throw in a string here, say hello world, and then we could throw in another comma and we'll actually do another math problem. Let's go five times five. Now the last one does not require a comma, so you can keep it that way. So let's try this and see if it works. So we basically have a generated table. Here are the column headers, and here are the values. Although we only scratched the bare surface of the select statement, I think that's a good place to end for now. And in the next video, we'll begin dissecting this and learning a little bit more about how we structure our SQL. So thanks guys, please be sure to subscribe. I really appreciate that, and if you like this video, please click like, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. You thought I wasn't going to say it.